Hi everyone, this is Terry. Are you ready for more My Design Center on the Luminaire? Today this is Lesson 5 and today we're going to use our scanning frame. This will be a repeat for the line design, but today we're working with a file that's much more complicated so I can show you what happens when you pick something that is very complicated. So we'll choose to First, we would choose scan, but I want to show you what we're working with. And here's the little giraffe that we're going to work with. You'll notice that I have my magnets in place. I only have four of them. And you'll see that I don't have anything under the sides here. It's really not necessary. All I need to, I, I could probably put two magnets to hold this down. I do have my embroidery foot on, so that's important. So. Make sure that you set it up correctly. Make sure you have enough room to scan. And I'll need to move my camera back because what will happen right now is it's scanning is that it will be too close. I'll select scan from the screen and then it will give me a message that says the frame will move to be scanned with the built-in camera. I'll choose OK. So now you can watch it go through the process of scanning. This white and black part up here is used for registration. So make sure you keep your, your frame clean. This process won't take too long. One of the things you can do is, um, using your scanning frame, I know I have several patterns that have, for instance, like uh, Kimberbell with uh, applique patterns and a booklet. You could take a photocopy of that with your, or scan it under your copier, use the black and white image for it. Or if you have one of these foldouts, you can use one of the foldouts. You just need to hold it down with the magnets. Now let's return and look at the screen. Okay, now that we're looking at the screen, the, the, we want to crop out part of this. I don't want all of the top part of this picture because I really don't need all of these little lines that are up here. In fact, I'd probably erase some of those if I had enough time to do it. And what I want to do is to get as much of the head in place. Let me move a couple of things out of my way. They're making a lot of noise. I apologize for that. If if I um, go down in the grayscale, I know I'll have problems. And what I'll end up with is a whole bunch of little circles around in this eye. In fact, I'll do that and let you see it. And you can let's zoom in so you can actually see. It's just a mess. And that's not what I want. So we'll bump up the grayscale detection to the top and we'll choose retry and you notice it really cleaned up that eye so we'll choose set and now what we'll do is we'll leave the artwork on the screen we're not going to resize it at this point because when you have something like this you want to be able to see your artwork in the background so that you can make the edits that you need to make i can leave it on this first level and we'll go to 800%. And here's where I want to clean up some to begin with. And what I could do is I could get rid of everything just so this eye is just one big black eye where it doesn't really have this highlight in it. And I think that's what I'm going to do because I don't know that for, the, for this, I don't think that it adds a, a lot to it. Uh, we'll choose a small enough size to get into some of those small areas, and I think a three would probably work. And I'll just go ahead and, with my eraser, get rid of all of these lines. First of all, these little bubble shapes. And if you go through a line, don't worry about it. You can clean it up. I don't want any of this because I don't really think it adds any value to what I'm doing. All right, the next thing I want to do is to take my 
pencil and fill in where I went through. And you notice there are places where you don't even have any lines. So you could add, you know, you can sit here all day adding lines back if you want. It just depends how much time you want to spend cleaning up artwork. And I'm retired, so I may have more time than some of you. But I wouldn't get very many videos done if I had to clean this up. Now, these little circles might be some place that I would want to work on cleaning up the artwork and, and adding more of that detail back in. The other thing I could do is I could erase all of this out and use a decorative fill. And if I was going to use this, that's probably what I would try to do. But you might want to stitch out something like this to see what it's going to look like. And you might be surprised. It may look pretty darn good with the amount of detail that you get from it just from your first scanning. So we'll just fill in a couple of things at, like here on this circle we could try to go in and add something around it i can't do that so i'm going to do undo i'll leave it as it is i do want to pan to the nose because i know from going through this several times that there's problems on the nose so we'll clean this up and what we'll do is we'll just delete this inside line here and use the outside line. Okay, and I managed to go a little too far, so we'll just close it in. All right, the next thing that you might want to do if you had something like this, like I said, I don't really think that the um, wood tone is something that I need. This would be where I would go out to like 400% possibly. And if I wanted to eliminate this wood tone that is over here on the side of this, I would get my array. Well, let me show you in a couple of ways. One thing you can do is you can draw a bounding box around an area and eliminate it. So you could go like this and select it, you know, big spot and go ahead and choose cut. That's gone. So that's one way of doing it. And when I'm doing large edits, this is what I do. I'll go and select big chunks and cut it. Okay, I'm back and I've edited, the, cleaned up the eye. I got rid of all of this background. It only took me a couple minutes to do that. And the other thing that I did um, was I hid the background so you can see what it's going to look like when it stitches out. We'll save this to memory. And now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go to next. Now I know because I've been through this enough that the zigzag stitch is going to be too much. So that's fine. I'll, I want to choose the link so every place that is a zigzag stitch is selected. And let's just change this to running stitch and choose OK. Or you could choose the triple running stitch. You've got to think about w what your plans are for it. Now that I've done that, let me save it to memory again. And we'll go ahead and set it. And let's see what we have. We'll zoom in so you can see it, and this is what it will look like. It's really not bad. Uh, I mean, I see some areas up here. If I had spent more time in editing this, I would have, you know, cleaner looking artwork. But we'll let it, watch it stitch out. So we'll go to our stitch out. We'll set it on two, and let's let it run through. You notice that it jumps from place to place, so you can expect that you're going to have some uh, tie-offs whenever that happens. I would use fabric markers um, to, to color this, like a coloring design. I've done that. Another good idea is to take crayons and use your crayons in the areas 
such as this right here, and then take a piece of uh, paper and put it over the top because you don't want to iron over the crayon and iron on your, your paper, like a paper towel, it will absorb the extra uh, crayon. And by the way, that becomes permanent after you've done that and you can launder it. I've created some cute things for my grandkids with that.